Now, a lot of you see my mock scrapes. I talk about mock scrapes all the time. If you're wondering what that stick's hanging down for in some of those videos, almost every one of our videos, with a big buck coming in and working that scrape, that's how, those are the mock scrapes that originated several years ago with a hanging vine, hanging branch. And, uh, and you can look up my mock scrape playlist. There's over 20 videos and uh, find out all about those. But I wanted to go with just the number of scrapes. How many number, how many scrapes do you need on your land? Some pretty cool, cool scrapes right here. This is one of our main food plots. It's a very hidden section. I actually shot my muzzleloader buck right over here at 175 yards from that, that uh, redneck behind me. And so we had a lot of buck activity here. We had these two scrapes right here that popped up this year. And uh, we had this scrape right up here. This is a giant one. This popped up right here. And it's pretty cool because we have these three scrapes right here. This is a big one right here. This box elder keeps getting older. So this box elder keeps leaning in and uh kind of interesting this scrape's kind of cool but it's on a little bit of an incline right here and uh it's going up this way going back to how many scrapes do you need we don't have a camera location right here so this spot bugs me it really does so what am i going to do this this is a big scrape i don't know if you guys see this is right here it's probably a good three feet in diameter it's worn down to the ground but we need to get rid of this scrape because there's a thought out there that more scrapes on your land will attract more bucks and that couldn't be further from the truth now in here this is kind of cool the scrapes are down here and the bucks are using it but i want to get a picture of them that's the only reason i have this down here this mock scrape this mock scrape right here it's a little piddly scrape right here if you can see it this uh doesn't look like much but we have a big scrape it's about the same as this one right here this one's been here since the summer of 2013. i want you guys to think about that that scrape has been there. How many perennial scrapes with a horizontal branch? Most of those get broke down, the tree grows up, and they just move on. And that's not a bad thing in, in itself. But going back to how many do you really need? So on this little food plot system, that food plot right there and the one down below, I want this scrape right here, this mock scrape, to be the only scrape on this food plot because I want every buck that enters these, these food pots around here to come to this scrape. So the more I have, the more that bucks can go over there, I'm not getting a picture of them. The more that bucks, there's three over here. Uh, this one right here. This one, is a, this one over here is an awesome one. I'm gonna make Dylan mad because I'm walking all over the place, but this one's a pretty cool scrape. Um, I'm sure if we left it here, I believe, you know, I think this, this branch is going to lean down a little bit more. We're going to put some leaves on it, but it's going to be at the right height for a traditional licking branch. But again, we have a perfect spot. We actually have the mount on the tree right over there where we have a camera. We just have to throw the camera in and watch that mock scrape. I want bucks to focus on the scrapes. Does it, meet, make, does it make sense? If I have four scrapes out here, typically the bucks don't go hit all four. It's not going to attract any more bucks. It's just going to define where they move within a certain area. That's why I don't like the rubbing posts. Bucks traditionally don't rub that often. A lot of rubs, natural rubs out in the woods, they're only hitting one time where scrapes can become those perennial scrapes. We have does, fawns, young bucks and old bucks hit them all year long, 365 days. So I want one mock scrape over here because I want an inventory of every buck that comes in this food plot. I don't want a certain buck that favors one of these scrapes, this scrape right here, and it doesn't get a picture. I want it on that one right there. So I'm cutting this one out this year. I'm cutting those out this year. I don't want them. I do that on the woods too. I like a scrape, approximately one scrape for every stand location. This stand location happens to be at 180 yards right up here on the hill in the form of a redneck. And I actually shot a buck coming to this scrape in either 2013 or 2014, or 2014 or 2015, right up from here on a, behind a red cedar. We even have a picture of it somewhere where the buck is getting its picture taken while he's taking a nose dive into the ground a beautiful 10.4 year old and you can see my orange hat back in the distance um, after shooting him i want him to just come to this one scrape there's a thought that well you can control the time on your property if you have more scrapes and it takes a long time for them to hit the, the scrapes and they'll be on your land longer they only have time to hit a certain number of scrapes they got to eat they got to chase does they're not just scraping all day long and here's the thought too, they could come out of their bedding area, hit 10 scrapes if that was the case before they ever get to your stand location and it, and it becomes dark. You never get a chance to actually shoot them. So I want one scrape down here. I want one scrape at approximately every stand location so that if I have any other major scrapes in the area that don't complement that line of travel, 
then I want to take those out of the picture. I want them to use that one trail, that one funnel trail. It is amazing how every deer in the woods goes and hits that scrape. And what they do is, and you can see this is about the right height. You see belly high? They're rubbing their preorbital gland scent on the end of that. And this vine right here, I'm not gonna take it out right now, but this vine might have an accumulation of 30 deer on there, does, fawns, bucks, old bucks, young bucks. And I believe that scent stays there for a while. They can differentiate between the scent. It's like, you know, we go by a bread fact, excuse me, a bread factor, we smell bread bacon, they smell the ingredients. That's, they're different and uh, way different. You know, their noses are incredibly powerful. So you ever wonder, like even a beagle, I had beagles for a while, how a beagle can come up to a rabbit track with no snow and immediately turn the exact direction that that rabbit went based on smell. That's just incredible to me that they can differentiate between that. So it's not too hard to think that a deer can smell every deer that's been to this licking branch. And that's why these are so powerful. That's why I want one camera location right back here on this. And you could see this, this scrape has seen better days. It's, uh, this branch has sagged down and it keeps going lower and lower. I think what we're gonna do this year is we're going to cut this branch off right up here. That'll allow this to lift more. This will lift up a little bit higher. And we're finally gonna have to replace this, this vine right here. You know, Diane and I first, when I put this here in 2014, I literally, she held the stepladder while I stood on the top of the stepladder and tied this up to the branch. Now I can touch it right here. So I was about right here tying this on. That's how far it sagged down. This thing's got to go. To me, it doesn't look natural. I just don't like it. Yeah, now you can see our yellow rope too. So a lot of times I like using dark green or, or camel. But what I'm gonna do is lift this up. I'm gonna replace this with a nice five foot vine. Um, this gets down to about a half inch diameter. I might beef it up a little bit. It's still gonna come down to about right here, this high. I'm still gonna use this camera mount right back here. We have our camera mount on this side branch. It hides in here very, very well. And I want every buck that comes into these food plots to come to that one scrape. I've been on properties literally that had uh, 500 scrapes on 200 acres in a Northern Wisconsin parcel. And uh, it was just crazy with the thought they were told that more scrapes equaled more bucks. Instead, scrapes just define movement. So if you have a lot of scrapes, you're not gonna bring them to that pinpoint location that you want to. I like these right here because does and fawns participate in the scraping activity. They leave their preorbital gland scent on there and you can collect a whole lot of scent, a whole lot of good scent. So think about that. About one scrape for every stand location or blind location. They're incredible. We want, we use this, we had, I think it was 2016, maybe 17, I think uh, right around there, but we had 34 bucks hit this, approximately 32 bucks hit it during the daylight. This is that secret of a spot right here and secluded of a spot. We use that for buck inventory and uh, you really don't need a lot of scrapes. You just need them in the right location. And uh, in about one per stand location, you'll be in the right direction. So we're gonna maintain this one. We'll have it better looking this fall. We're gonna get this branch up in the air a little bit more, but we're still gonna have that camera right there that hides in on that horizontal branch. And we'll bring it to you later this year. This is a very important spot uh, for us in our planning on this property. And I hope you enjoyed this because mock scrapes are a whole lot of fun. And yes, I do cut these scrapes down. I will be cutting these down. It seems kind of crazy, but I want them all, every buck right here, like I've said, this fall. And we'll find out every buck that's in this area. And I would say within three quarters of a mile of this location, no surprises. I talk about that too. 95% of the bucks that you take pictures of every year should not be a surprise. I've heard people say that 50% of the bucks are, they don't recognize and that's a really bad thing because if you're doing things like this and you're defining the movement on the land and you're putting it all together properly, you're gonna recognize 95% of the bucks that come onto your property. And this is the way we do it. After we maintain this, I might even add a camel rope or a green rope to this one this year, but we're definitely gonna make an improvement on this this season.